Hi, this is Anne and I'm back with my new tutorial. We're going to be painting this sweet and simple painting of white and blue anemone. And at the same time, we're going to discuss the mysteries of painting a white flower on a white paper. And here is a list of all the supplies that I'm using for this painting. And uh, you remember, you don't have to use the same colors. You can make it your own. But if you want to refer to this list, take a screenshot of it and uh, uh, use the same colors. Anyway, uh, today I'll be using 100% cotton paper, cold pressed, and my Chinese brushes, and basically a yellow, couple of different kind of violet, a blue, and green for this painting and um, of course the fine line ink pens at 0 0.05 and 0 0.1 millimeters and this is my simple drawing I just wanted to get the size of the flowers right and um, the <clears throat> petals so uh, other than that I'm just gonna go and be creative with the process and as usual, I'm here waking up my colors by spraying a little bit of water on them. These are my Miss and Michello gold uh, paints, and I love that palette. It's really practical, easy to clean. This is the second palette that I'm using. These are my Daniel Smith and uh, Winsor Newton colors. This is my old palette. It's a little bit harder to keep clean because the corners are really hard to clean in this one. So right away, I managed to create a smudge on my paper. So here I'm lifting it up with clean water and a paper towel and just rubbing it gently and repeating the process. And hopefully it will come up. Violet is the one color for sure that does not come up very easily, but a lot of other colors they do. So I'm starting out with this blue flower and uh, it's a little bit behind the big white flower. I'm doing every other uh, petal, so I am hoping that I don't get one big blue blob here, but being able to separate the petals a little bit by doing this, giving them little time to um, dry at the edges of the color before I add the other petals. And I'm starting with the light blue purple mixture and adding darkness in the center of the flower there. Uh, you can see that I also left little white speckles in the petals there. Um, and uh, those are the little sunspots that uh, I always create in my flower paintings. And lifting up some of the purple paint there to get some transparent feeling for the petal. Uh, purple is one color that once it dries it's pretty, it, it sets in and you, it's hard to clean it or lift it up so try to do that before uh, it gets really dry and then it's continue to work on getting the center darker and uh, cleaning up some of the edges here. I'm using the violet, the lighter violet and my ultramarine blue right now. Creating little um, lines where the petals have maybe little folds in them and that creates this shadow now starting to work on the back petals there and adding darkness where the shadow areas are this also has little shadow that is created from the flower in the front so i'm just putting a little darkness on the edge of that one petal. I'm speeding up the video just a little bit while I 
create this blue flower and uh, I will now start adding some more darkness in the middle and uh, creating the other petals. There I go. I think this is the blue um, ultramarine color and as I start creating the other petals that are kind of in the front there I'll um, leave a little bit of white edges showing between the other petals that I already painted to kind of give them give the petals a light glowing edge and also so separation so it's not going to be one big blob of blue but there is white areas and edges that um, the viewer can then see that those are separate petals. Of course, I will be putting also my um, ink pen there that will help to also separate the petals. But this is a one way of, or one technique that I use in um, being able to see the petals better is just by leaving the white areas between the petals. Just very here and there, not everywhere. Just you can see I touch the petals together and then I just leave little white marks on the edges. And one last back petal here that is a little darker than the rest. It's in the shadow. in darkness in the center of the flower and in the shadow areas the petals that are in the back this gives dimension to the flowers make them more three-dimensional not so flat creating more of those folds, veins in the flower. Now I'm gonna drop a little bit of just clean water into the flower. It's just I like the way it looks when you get cauliflower effects and it also gives a lighter spot in the flower which might indicate that the sun is shining and glowing there on that petal. final touches before I move on to the next the white flower and in darkness and remember that watercolor always dries much lighter than it is when it's wet so don't be scared of adding darkness so here I go to the white flower and white flower, the principle is basically that even though the flower is white and in our brain we look at and we know that the flower is white, it actually has very little bit of white in it. The flower has a lot of shadow areas and what I do is I use the colors uh, of the surrounding flowers, of the sun, of the leaves, um, to make those shadows. So those folds that I was doing and making for um, the blue flower, now I do for the white flower in the um, and the shadow areas by using all the 
colors that are surrounding the white flower. And they are just very watered down, um, li much, much lighter colors than the um, colorful flowers that might be surrounding the white flower. Yet it's kind of surprising how much color white flowers have. I do leave more white of the paper sewing on a white flower, of course, but um, it's still pretty limited, especially in the shadow areas. There might be hardly any white showing, but compared to the background and compared to the foliage, the leaves and the other flowers, the white flower has to be a whole lot lighter uh, in value. And that gives um, illusion of whiteness on that flower. I'm mixing the colors uh, that I use for the white flower together, like yellow and blue. I think I used a little bit like cerulean blue in this white flower as well. It might not be on my list of colors that I uh, put in the supply list, so I apologize for that. But I did, I can see there a little bit of cerulean blue. But I uh, mix the colors so that they are a little bit more on an earthy gray tone, not pure yellow or pure purple or blue. Um, and now I'm gonna go and start working on getting the center painted, which is again darker. So I start out just putting some little bit darker purple and I keep adding a little blue, a little bit more purple in the center. Then I take pure water and I spread out. I don't want that um, line of the first purple to show there. So just mixing it and uh, hopefully hoping that the dark color doesn't go all over which it did and it worked out really nice. Now I'm starting to do a little bit of uh, green leaves that are showing from behind the flower. These anemones, they have really delicate uh, leaves, kind of lace-like leaves, and I'm just kind of having fun creating them from my head adding color here and there and trying to make them just light and not, not like big heavy leaves. I'm using olive green and green yellow um, and creating these. be going and adding a little bit darkness there eventually and yellow as well darker for the part with a little bit more on shadow and these leaves are going on top of the blue flower because the blue blue flower is in the back and then doing the stem, just leaving, leaving white sewing as well. Don't want to make it just a heavy stick looking thing. The stem to be just something heavy and so it, I'm leaving white and breaking it up a little bit. It looks much sweeter that way. And adding now a little bit darker leaves for the darker flower. Now it's time to do the center. So I want this center look very, very dark. I'm using my darkest purple and also adding um, indigo 
blue in it so it's a mixture of purple and indigo and leaving a little bit of a highlight looking even though it's black center there is a little bit of lighter uh, purple showing in it and then these are the stamens that I'm painting here and the front flower is gonna have bigger stamens in it it's closer up and in each of the stamen you can also see a highlight of lighter color in it where the sun is reflecting the same in this dark middle part the lighter uh, violet is just the sun's reflection even on the darkest uh, part of the flower the stamens I'm making them bigger and you can see that I'm leaving um, in them a little bit of white showing in not all of them but not white but purple whatever light purple that is behind um, might be a little bit hard to see it now but they have a little bit of um, they're like a little donuts that has a, the lighter color showing in the center. And that'll be um, just a little detail that adds in the sweetness of the painting. It's all the reflection of the sun everywhere on the flowers. And after I finish this center, I'm gonna go into a few highlights for the leaves, a little bit of yellow where the sun is uh, shining on them before I um, start doing the back background. I wanna get everything very, very dry before I do the background. So I think I'm going to be um, using a hair dryer to try to speed up the drying time. The light source for my painting is coming from the top left so I'm gonna be leaving that top left corner the lightest part of the background and I'm using here a green green yellow and um, going lighter in this corner as I go I'm not so worried about getting every piece of the a background totally color and I when I go around the flower I leave light areas or white areas uh, on the edges of the petals and I just continue working down and leaving white also around the leaves and I apologize, I think I did not realize as I was painting, I was going uh, out of the camera area here in the bottom. So you don't see I'm adding a little bit of um, olive green and then a um, little bit of ultramarine blue 
in the mixture, make it darker and more earthier, the bottom part of the painting. And again, the stems leaving white areas in there, coming up, going lighter again. Here you can see the blue in the bottom and now adding a little bit of splatter of the paint green and the yellow green in there. Try not to go overboard. Here I also do some purple, small purple spots. I think I have used mostly my large Chinese brush here um, until now and uh, I'm picking up some of the paint I don't want the splatter to be very very strong especially for the background so I pick up some of the paint and make them lighter everything to be very very dry before I start doing the ink work and here you see the details of the painting part it looks like this a lot of white areas in the leaves on the stems edges of the flower this is the way it looks with before the um, ink work and here it's the painting is like this without the fine line ink which is already sweet and you could stop here if you want to but as you know I like the ink work yeah, I like the way it gives definition and structure to the painting and makes it more interesting overall um, it adds something special to the painting and I'm going to start out this ink, ink work with my point liner uh, brand 0.05 millimeter uh, pen. And with the leaves going around, as I draw them, I add a little bit of sharpness on the edges of the leaves to make them look like they are leaves. And I'm kind of showing you this speed it up because this takes a long time and I don't want you to have to watch me painting and drawing these lines in real time. I see a lot of people painting uh, or using ink lining by uh, just drawing color and then uh, going and creating lines and petals and leaves with the line uh, work. I don't use the ink that way. I already in my painting process, I actually do paint the leaves and I paint the petals. And then I very carefully trace all the petals and the leaves and the stems with my ink. Uh, and give them more definition that way. Now for my backgrounds, I might find faraway flowers or leaves with my ink work, but for the close-up flowers, I do mostly already have a predetermined um, shapes for the flowers with my watercolors. And then I just, um, uh, redefine them with my ink work so sometimes I go and I break my own rules sometimes the painting just leads me to do something different and that's the fun of the whole creative process it's full of surprise I wanted to just start out by outlining everything um, the big big petals and the um, center here I want to make decisions as I go on how much 
ink I will add to this uh, painting. Uh, I will I outline all the colors or just part of the colors and uh, you're gonna see that uh, after outlining all the leaves and the petals I make decisions on wanting to outline all the white and light um, areas of the petals and that will bring out the light in this painting. Sorry, I'm going kind of off the edge there. It's hard to see what I'm doing. I apologize for that. But I'm just doing the leaves. So here I made the decision of going and doing the light parts of the flowers. definitely brings out the sun's reflection so much better. And I'm staying very carefully on the edges of the colors. I don't just go here and there and um, I actually stay on the very edge and take my time in following the edges. gonna be speeding up now so this doesn't take forever because I'm, I'm going very slowly actually drawing this I wanted to show you this part because I think that's the difference that I see with a lot of people using ink work which is fine to use it whichever way you want, but this is the way I use it. And I think it's, it's different than a lot of other people when it comes to uh, flower painting. And here I decided that um, I'll do all, first all the white parts of the background and see how that looks and make decisions if I want to start um, also separating some of the colors.
looking at this point I make decisions right here I'm like hmm I think I think it needs more interest in the back so I take and I start outlining the little bit darker yellow areas they could be some kind of leaves in the back far away just adds a little bit more into the background and also the kind of purplish bluish areas in the back nobody knows what they really are but it just indicates that something might be there always a little bit of a struggle how much you want to uh, add into the background not to make it too busy and take away from the main flowers which sometimes I have managed to spoil my paintings by doing the background too busy this is the final result and I'm showing you all the little details, how it looks right now. You can see I didn't go and outline all the colors. I left lots of colors just melting into the flower by itself. No outlining, especially on the white flower. I'm coming to the end of this painting. I hope that you learned something uh, new about my technique and especially how to approach painting white flowers. And I hope you will come and visit my uh, uh, Facebook artist page and also the group I created called Art with Anne Gandalfo. Fun with colors, come and join it. And I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.